Hi, welcome to Yoga Selection. My name is Rod. Today we're working with forward bends and looking at forward bends from the perspective of someone who might have a stiffer body and in particular tight hamstrings. Make sure that you've got a chair. We'll be using a bolster. Have at least three blankets, two blocks and a belt. And then let's get started. We'll begin in a kneeling forward bend that doesn't encounter any hamstring tightness, stiffness. For that reason, a really nice pose for people with tighter hamstrings to make use of in terms of releasing the, the lower back, which can get often get a little bit loaded, overstrained, when we're working with the forward bending seated postures. So put your big toes together, your knees apart, gap between the knees is roughly the width of your rib cage. Walk your hands away from your knees, make sure that your hips are staying anchored down and it's more important that your hips remain in contact with your heels and less important how close your forehead gets to the floor. For most people, particularly with stiffer body, the head will be a little bit up and off the floor. You can even just glance at your hands, make sure that your fingers are spreading. The middle finger of each hand is pointing forwards here. Firm contact with the hands down into the floor and use that as leverage to push your hips further back and further down. Feel how the lumbar spine lengthens when you do that. And the lumbar spine runs in that region of the body between the pubic bone and the navel. So literally you can lengthen there, pressing your hands down and when your hips anchor, you move your pubic bone away from the navel. Keeping your hips anchored, come back to the hands, press the hands down, just a little bit as if stretching the yoga mat away from the knees as you press your hands down. And feel how that really helps to broaden across the lumbar spine region. Again, that area from the pelvis towards the, the navel region. Here we're thinking more of the back of the body, but the skin, the, the muscle fiber there, spreading in an outward direction, away from the spine, towards the sides and it's quite a nice and, and comfortable sensation to be working with. Just the, the lower back both lengthening and broadening, we're creating space for it. All right and then let's come up but now in comparison we'll work with a standing forward bend where we do encounter some stiffness from the hamstrings. Let's just first of all do it without any supports. We'll keep our feet hip width apart. Uttanasana is the pose. Feet hip width apart. Just have your hands to the fronts of your legs. That gives your back a little bit of support as you walk your hands down the fronts of the legs. And it doesn't matter where you come to. It might be around the knees. It might be around the shins. But more than likely, it's not a possibility to reach the floor. And don't even try to do that. And just, and just check, and we're going to adjust in a moment. But... Some of the, the, the difficulties there is that we start to shorten through that lumbar spine area. Feel how the navel feels a bit pulled back in towards the pubic bone. The spine generally, it's short at the front and the, the back of the spine is sort of bulging up into the skin. It tends to collapse the chest and it's not a particularly comfortable sensation on the back either. So let's see if we can adjust the pose and make it more comfortable. So come all the way up. What we can do, if you just look this way, is use blocks for the head, so very common, but still for many people that's a little too low and it might look more like this, that you're, you're rounding the, the spine and the upper back in order to get down that low. So all we need to do there is just boost the height further and a really nice way of doing that, if we just use our bolster, put the bolster across the mat and then we can hold the blocks, we've got the tall blocks, place the blocks down onto the bolster and then try that now. I'll give you a moment just to come into position. Still you've got your feet a generous hip width, maybe slightly wider than hip width. Blocks are directly under your shoulders and ideally now we've established enough height under the hands to enable us to completely straighten the legs. The, the knees need to straighten. But in doing that, we're maintaining as straight and as long a spine as possible. 
We'll get to the, the spine shortly, but let's first of all just check in with the, what the legs are doing. With your feet first, the, the big toe bases, with the knuckle where the toe joins into the ball of the foot, press firmly down. If that's hard to feel, just lift your toes, all of them, completely off the floor for a moment. You'll feel that knuckle, how it starts to press down into the floor. Keep that pressure and then you can just soften the toes back down. So big toe bases press into the floor. We're lifting up through the knee region. The kneecaps here are firm, gripping back into the legs, not loose and collapsing towards the shins. And so important there, what we feel at the, the front of the leg, and it's often a little bit easier to, to know and to recognize and to feel, but we want to also establish good awareness of the backs of the legs. So the back of the knee, it starts to open, and there's that stretching sensation that many people feel will be feeling throughout the backs of the thighs. It might run down into the calves as well. But through that, just focus on that region of the back thigh quite close to where the knee is, so on the back of the leg, that last bit of the hamstring area before the back of the knee, and just see if you can lift that up more. The balls of the feet press down, and that lower back thigh area, lift it up. And then going higher still, just under where the buttocks are, the, that last region of the hamstring area, the back thigh, before the buttock region, lift up there, See if you can not just lift up, but spread open that region of the leg. We do that just a little bit by rolling the inner thighs back. So the whole of the front thigh area, lifting the muscle here, gripping firm, pressing back into the bone. And then with the hands pressing down, we can lengthen through the torso, from the pubic bone to the navel, we can lengthen forwards. We can move the sternum bone away from the navel, as we look up, we can move the chin away from the sternum bone. So we're lengthening the, the hamstrings without shortening the front of the spine and without rounding the upper back. Okay, release and come up. Notice how also we were able to maintain that longer timing, having the support of the, the arms that way. This next version of the pose won't hold quite as long because it will ask a little bit more of those muscles there in the lower back. They'll need to firm and grip. We're going to use the belt and put the bolster off to the side and we're going to be standing on the belt. So we don't want to make, we don't want to use a small loop of the belt here. We need to make the, adjust the buckle so that we can make as large a loop as possible with the belt. You could even undo the buckle altogether. And then we're going to stand on the belt. Feet, as we just had them in the previous pose, we've got the feet a little bit wider than, than hip width. Make sure your feet are straight, knowing that tighter hamstrings often makes the feet turn out. Make sure that your feet remain straight, toes pointing directly ahead. And be really specific where that belt is on each foot. It needs to be just slightly back from the base of the big toe. It's not fully in the arch, it's not on the ball of the foot, just that little sweet spot there, just back from that knuckle where the big toe joins the ball of the foot. And we're gonna resist down with our feet onto the belt, and that gives us something to pull up against with our hands as we walk our hands down the belt. So press the, with the feet, press the belt down into the floor, but with your hands and with your arms, pull the belt back up against the feet. Notice how that gives you leverage to lengthen more the, the front of the spine. So that key area from the pubic bone to the navel, pull with the belt and lengthen there. And so notice also as we pull with the belt, we gain that ability to contain the upper back. Rather than letting it bulge up into the clothing, it moves back down and into the body and stays more visibly straight. And then we won't be holding too much longer, just the, the last aspect, pulling with the belt and moving the chest forwards, the sternum bone moving in the direction of the chin. You're looking up and across the room. And then to come out of the pose, just partially bend the knees and remove the belt and come up to standing. Utita Hasta Parangustasana, a really good pose for 
lengthening hamstrings, a good preparatory pose to include before working with forward bends. It's sometimes done this way with the heel up on top of the chair. And if you've got tighter hamstrings, it's, it's just not possible to get the, the foot up that high and you'll probably find that this starts to happen, both knees start to bend and the lower back starts to collapse and, and round. So we're going to either use the seat of the chair and if you've got really tight hamstrings, potentially that is going to work well for you. And probably for most people, this will be a good starting point. Just placing the bolster across the seat of the chair. Just bear in mind that what we lose, what we gain here is that the foot can be lower. What we lose is that we won't be able to press the foot into the wall in time. When you can get up higher, that will be nice to have that. For the time being, though, it's fine if we have the foot away from the wall. So we stand facing the support. Make sure you've got your belt there in one hand. As soon as we step the right foot up onto the support, there'll be the tendency for the left foot to distort and turn out to the side. So we need to be really clear initially that that left foot is straight. The toes pointing directly ahead. And then we just step the right heel up onto the support. And then just a moment, just to check that you've got the right configuration there. It should be challenging, but possible to fully straighten the left leg, the standing leg. And it should similar, be possible to straighten the right knee without that right hip lifting up. Let's just reach in now and place that belt again, just under the ball of the foot and then let out enough of the belt so that you can bring your shoulders directly above your hips. I'll give you a moment just to find that position. Let's focus initially on the standing leg and particularly if there's some instability in the pose you'll feel fluctuation there in the sole of the foot and the bit that we want to make really stable and clear is the big toe base. So that left big toe base, press down and let the weight come back into the heel and then completely straighten the left knee and as you straighten the left knee roll the left inner thigh back. And now the, the right leg, we're pulling the belt back into the foot but resisting that, pressing the foot back into the belt so that, that right big toe base extends forwards Keep the right knee straight, keep the right hip down. Now that area where the spine and the pelvis meet, just need to make sure it's moving into the body so that the spine and the chest can lift up. There's a lot of tightness in the hamstring. It tends to pull the back of the pelvis down. We just want to make sure that's not occurring. Where the spine and the pelvis meet, make sure that part of the body is moving in towards the wall you're facing. All right, and then release, and we'll change sides. A moment just to establish your balance, place the belt. In terms of your balance, make sure that the, the head is still, your eyes fixed on one point there on the wall in front of you. <coughs> make sure that the, the Head is not tilting forwards and the eyes looking down, looking directly ahead. We need to check that that right foot has remained straight, the toes pointing directly ahead. It should be challenging but possible to get the right knee straight. If it's not quite possible, if you're not quite there, you just need to bring the support down lower if you're easily able to do that, it might be that you're a little too low. As long as the stretch there is sustainable for the left hamstring. So the tendency, if there's tightness in the hamstring, is for the back of the pelvis to tuck under, get pulled under, and that's when the spine drops. So when that area where the spine and the pelvis meet, move in, the chest, and spine lift up. Don't confuse that with the left hip lifting. Keep the left outer hip down as the spine and the chest lift up. That region of the chest just under the collarbones. 
lift it upwards and forwards. All right, and release. So mainly hamstrings we'll focus on, but the forward bends that we'll be working with today also will get into knees and, and the hips and the adductors. Let's work with the adductors now. So we'll just turn to the side so that we've got the right side of the body facing the chair and the support. We'll use the same amount of height for most people that will work well for both of these variations. Then we'll bring the right heel up onto the support. Just lean in, place the belt around the ball of the right foot. If you need to bend the knee in order to reach the foot, of course you can. And then the hand onto the hip, left hand onto the hip. The right buttock, it tends to protrude back, keep it into the body. The right thigh crease, draw it downwards towards the floor. Now in order to get your hips level, subtle point, but look for it, the right sitting bone actually needs to move a bit closer to the left leg. If the left leg is too active, it, it blocks that movement. So just make sure that the right sitting bone can move a little across towards the left leg. You probably feel as that occurs the left outer hip, it just loosens a little. But then the left thigh press back without the right hip lifting. Move both buttocks in, the right one, also the left one. We don't clench the buttocks, but just enough firmness there to get them moving in an upward direction. And then the right waist lift, the right chest lift, and the left shoulder roll back. All right, and then we'll release. And to the left side. Make sure that you're judging your distance correctly, bringing the foot up onto the support, ensuring that the right ankle is directly beneath the right hip. The belt there you're holding with the hand, make sure that you're not leaning towards it in order to reach out. But as much of the belt out as is necessary to keep your spine perpendicular to the floor. Left buttock in, now the left thigh crease, literally the crease that the leg makes where it joins into the pelvis, move that thigh crease in a downward direction. As you do that, the left sitting bone, it needs to move a little closer towards the, the right leg. And I can feel it. If I place my right hand here, I can feel the hip socket just a little bit push out in that direction. We'll allow that to happen so that the pelvis can sit more level to the floor. And then without the left hip relifting, the right thigh press back. The buttocks move in. The, the left one, move it forwards. Just a, a subtle action, slight tightening of the right buttock. And then resist with the foot, pull with the belt, lift the left waist up, the left chest up, and move your right shoulder back. Looking directly ahead, make sure that you're not looking down. The head staying back over, vertically aligned with the right ankle. All right, and then we'll release. And let's get down onto the floor now. We'll move our bolster and chair out of the way. Bolster could be a nice support for this next pose to sit on, but we're going to just to be able to customise height a little more effectively, we'll use blankets. Let's use two blankets. And so blankets generally will always start in this configuration, in this fold, and we'll revert that to a, a broad three-fold blanket. So starting here, we fold the blanket in thirds one way, in thirds the other way, and then we get a nice thick folded blanket in this oblong shape. We're going to need two of these. One stacked on top of the other. And we're going to be going to oppose Baddha Kanasana. And it might highlight not so much the, the stiffness in the hamstrings, we're going to get to that, but definitely the adductors. We've just looked at them. Also the, the hips themselves, the knees, potentially the ankles a bit as well. So we're going to be sitting on these blankets. You can put blocks down 
either side of you as support for your knees, but if there's a lot of tightness there, often the knees will be supported by that tightness itself. Bending the knees out to the side, sliding the soles of the feet in together. And because we're sitting on those two threefold blankets, we will be with both hands holding the ankles, knowing that the, the more classical position here for the hands is interlocking the fingers and placing the hands around the outsides of the feet. But if we were to do that here, it would involve stooping forwards, and that's the exact opposite of what we're looking for in today's class. So just holding with both hands quite firmly the, that last bit of the shin region before the ankle, and then we can actually, with the hands, pull against that part of the leg as leverage to lift the spine and the chest up. Some of the poses that we'll be following, we'll be able to use our leg strength to support and lift the spine. It's a little bit harder in this particular pose. Not completely impossible though. We've got the ability to contain that area between the outer heel and the outer ankle. So just spend a moment, bring your attention, your awareness to that region of each foot, that point in between the outer heels and the outer ankles, we just want to make sure that that region of the foot is not sinking, collapsing. It needs to be contained, lifting up and into the body. And in addition to that, the heels, rather than just being passive, we're squeezing the heels against one another. Feel how that just helps to open the hips a little more. And the inner knees, they lengthen outwards, away from the center line of the body, as we lift our spine and chest up, the outer thigh creases, they stay down. We want to avoid those outer thigh creases feeling as if they need to push forwards and lift up as our spine and chest lift. See if you can make the separation, the spine and the chest lifting up, but those outer thigh creases staying down. The knees generally just have a nice feeling of being relaxed, they're not getting tense and pushing up as we lift our chest. Roll the shoulders back, move your shoulder blades in, lift and open the chest in a forwards and upwards direction. All right, so Baddha Kanasana, a really good pose for preparing us for Janu Shishasana. And we can keep those two blankets if need be, but probably a good default position that will work as a starting point for most people will be one three-fold blanket. We'll try that. You can keep your second blanket there within reach. We can always add that to the stack if we need. And I'll give you the cue as to why you might need that in a moment when we sit there. But let's just have a, 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 an additional blanket. So not the three-fold blanket that you've just taken off the stack, but the third blanket. And let's roll it from narrow end to narrow end. And more than likely, that's going to be a useful support for our knees. And we'll look at that now. So sitting with your belt within reach, back up onto the threefold blanket. We've got our, let's we'll today work with the right leg as the straight leg first. So we'll be bending the left leg. First of all, the knee bends up towards the ceiling. And then we just let the leg turn out so that the knee turns out to the side. We bring the sole of the left foot adjacent to the inside of the right leg. And then we just manually slide the heel back so that the left heel aligns with the inner groin of the right leg. We then just assess, I should show first without the support, we assess whether or not our knee, the bent knee can come all the way to the floor. Now, if it can come to the floor, it's maybe a consideration that we can think about bringing the heel of the left foot across a little towards the inner groin of the left leg. More than likely, if you've got a stiffer body, the knee is sitting up, in which case it's better just to keep the left foot aligned with the right leg, the left heel adjacent to the right inner groin. You're staying on the side of that foot, we're not allowing that foot to come underneath the right thigh. And then if the knee is off the floor, rather than just leaving it hanging, we'll put that rolled blanket 
under the knee. Now I did say we'd assess whether or not we need this additional blanket. Just with your hands to the floor there beside you, see if, if you are able to manage and maintain some lift in the lower back, that area where the spine and the pelvis join needs to move in. And if that's just not possible at this stage, then add some extra height. Sit on as much height as you need until you do gain the ability to move that area where the spine and the pelvis meet, moving it inwards. Once we've established that, we'll take our belt. If you need to bend the knee to reach the foot, of course, do so. Place the belt just under the ball of the foot and then let out enough of the belt so that you can sit in an upright position with your shoulders over your hips. Make sure that the, the left knee is relaxed, releasing down onto that roll blanket. And move the back of the left hip in. Imagine someone behind you there with their hand just pushing that part of the pelvis in a forward direction. And as you do that, the pubic bone a little bit turns towards the, the right side. It's helpful because it means that the chest then can start to face more directly ahead, otherwise it tends to distort and angle itself more across to the left side. We've already looked at it, that area where the spine and the pelvis join move into the body. Notice you've got to give a little bit more emphasis to the left side there. It moves in and then the navel. It can twist across a little towards the right. Again, it just helps the chest to be more facing directly ahead. The, as you pull firmly with the belt, but resist with the foot, we gain the ability to move the upper back in, but particularly on the left side there, or around that left shoulder blade and just underneath, move in. And again, we just get that improved ability to make the chest face directly ahead. So we're making sure that our left knee is relaxed. We're supporting and lifting the lower back. And we're making sure that the right leg is straight, pressing the back of the knee down. And if we're managing that, we're potentially ready to add more of a, a forward bending aspect to the pose. However, if at this point you're already getting a really intense stretch into the hamstring, and you might be, then there's no need to take the pose any further. You can just remain at this point and consolidate. But those of you that are going to see if we can just take it that little bit further, we're going to now, rather than holding the belt with both hands, we'll transfer the belt over to the left hand and just move that left hand a little closer in towards the foot. The right hand will bring it to the floor there. Just see where it feels balanced and comfortable. For me, it's probably more adjacent to the right outer thigh. You might also find that having it back further near the hip gives you a more upright stance. So just you assess that, see which works better for you. Place the right hand to the floor. And so we are thinking of coming forwards, leading with the chest, but before we get too far into the forward bending action, let's focus on relaxing the left knee. Make sure that it's releasing down into that blanket or the floor if you're not using the blanket. The left outer thigh, let it release back to the floor. The left sitting bone, make sure it's got a firm contact to the blanket that you're sitting on. But then pulling with the belt, pressing with the right hand, and we turn the pubic bone towards the right side. And the navel, it turns towards the right side as we start to come forwards. But we're leading that forward bending action with the left side of the chest. It's under the left collarbone there. Lift upwards and forwards to the space there directly above the right foot. Keep the right foot active. As the belt pulls back into the foot, the big toe base, it projects forwards. The right inner heel as well, projecting forwards. So we're coming forwards, but minimizing the collapsing in the chest, sinking in the chest, and also minimizing the degree to which the upper back rounds, keeping the spine as straight as possible as we come forwards. All right, and then release and Let's change sides. We'll bring the rolled blanket across to the right side. Just 
start with the, the right knee facing up and then we just let the right knee come out to the side slide the foot in so that the sole of the foot is touching the inside of the left leg and then with the hand just manually bit by bit perhaps sliding the heel back as close as possible to the left inner groin assess the knee if your knee is comfortably easily coming to the floor maybe you, you could consider potentially reducing the height however the focus of the class today is for people that are sort of tighter in the hamstrings, the hips, the adductors. So more than likely it means that we're going to stay on this threefold blanket and keep the heel of the right foot aligned with the inner groin of the left leg. In, in time, once the, the body is more flexible, we'll think more about bringing the heel across towards the right side and turning more onto the top of the right foot. Stiffer body though, we, we keep the foot more at a right angle to the shin bone and we stay on the side of that foot. The sole of the foot is facing inwards towards the left leg. Leave a comfortable gap between the heel and the pelvis. But as the flexibility increases, know that you'll be looking to bring the heel closer and closer to the pelvis. Place the belt under the ball of the left foot. Look at your hands. And just check their distance away from the foot. It's very common here for the right hand to sit a little behind the, the left hand. Don't allow that to be the case. Walk the hand, if necessary, up the belt so that both hands are equal distance there from the foot. And that adjustment, really, we notice it in the hands, but it's intended for the chest. The reason the right hand tends to drag back is because the chest on that side tends to get a little bit pulled back. And then just pause there for a moment. The back of the right hip, move it into the body. So we gain the ability to do that by pulling with the belt against the foot, moving the back of the right hip in. Pulling with the belt where the spine and the pelvis join, move into the body. It's quite a small point, but just isolate it the right side of that point. Move it in. And then the navel starts to turn quite naturally across to the left. So that your breastbone now, the sternum bone, is able to face directly ahead. And directly ahead is, is into that region of space directly above the left toes. Knowing that if there's some tightness in the body, more than likely you're feeling that the sternum bone is getting pulled around towards the right side. We're lifting the spine, containing the upper back. If you're ready then to think about the forward bending action, we'll transfer the belt into the right hand, bring the, the left hand to the floor. And Janu Shishasana, this pose, it's in, in many respects, is as much of a twist as it is a forward bend. So the twisting action, it comes from turning the pubic bone towards the left, turning the navel towards the left, bringing the right chest forwards and upwards towards the left foot. In terms of the upper back, that area near the right shoulder blade, move it deeper into the body. And as we're coming forwards with the chest, we're lifting the spine up and out from the pelvis, maximizing the length there from the pubic bone to the navel. All right, and then release and we'll come up. And make sure again that you, you so the roll blanket will just put off to the side. You've got that extra threefold blanket. If you're not already sitting on it, make sure that it's there within reach. We may need to sit on it for this next pose. And in fact, knowing that the emphasis of this class is for people that are working with stiffer bodies, let's go with the assumption that we're going to need a little bit more height than a threefold blanket. So commonly, that would be an average amount of height. And for many people, that would work well. If there's some stiffness in the knees, in the hamstrings, then doubling that height will definitely be beneficial. When we sit on the threefold blankets, we sit with both of the sitting bones onto the threefold blankets. 
we're going to have one leg bent back in virasana, the kneeling pose, virasana. We just need to move the blankets across a little bit towards the right side of the mat to allow space for the left ankle and toes to point back. So I'll show you what I mean there. Make sure that you've got the belt there within reach. Sit up onto the blankets. And initially with both legs extending out in front of you, make sure that the left outer hip is level to the left edge of the blankets. And we lean across a little bit towards the right. We bend the left leg back, toes pointing directly back towards the wall behind. Remember to, with your hand, just move the calf muscle back and away from the knee. A little bit out to the side as well. And then that just helps the left thigh to descend down as you come into this upright position. I'll give you a moment just to, to feel that. Maybe don't yet use the belt, just have the hands there to the floor beside you. And so we know that in the forward bends we're working often with the straight leg, pressing it down and using that as leverage to lift the spine up. Just delay that for a moment, keep the knee straight but don't overwork it. Just, and just feel when we release and relax the left leg, quite naturally the knee a little bit pulls the, the yoga mat towards the centre of the room. It's very subtle, but just notice it because we actually want to encourage that action. So as we let that left thigh bone release, quite naturally there's a little bit of grip on the mat as if the mat just a hint of being pulled away from the wall behind. We want to maintain that <coughs> excuse me, without losing that as we bring the belt around the ball of the right foot. Start in your upright position and now press the right thigh down but without losing that nice release that we've established there in the left thigh bone. Left thigh bone it releases down, the right thigh bone it presses down. I haven't mentioned, but if your hips at this point are not level, if the left hip is lifting higher than the right hip, it just means that you need to add additional height. You've got a third blanket. You might even need to just pause the video, fold that into a threefold, and then add that to the stack. Sit on as much height as you need in order to keep your hips level. The bolster also is a, a good prop that we can use here in addition to three-fold blankets if need be. So you can't use too much height here, just use whatever height you need in order to get your hips level. So we're pulling the belt against the foot, pressing the foot back against the belt, we move the back of the left hip in, feel it, the knee just a little bit nudges forwards as we do that and we can turn the pubic bone towards the right side. Again so that the chest is facing straight ahead towards that space there directly above the right toes. If we're able to maintain lift in the lower back and opening in the chest then there's the option of going forwards. For many people with tight hamstrings you'll probably find already you're getting a sufficient stretch and there's no need to take the pose further. And today's video we won't be taking the pose too much further but the way we add that little bit of extra forward bending we could just keep the, the belt there and bend the elbows out to the side and another time we could look at that. But for today, holding the belt in the left hand and bringing the right hand down to the floor. It gives you that little bit of extra support in terms of balance. It gives you that extra bit of support in terms of keeping the spine lifting and more straight. It also, in combination with the belt, helps you to twist a little bit so that the pubic bone, it can come around towards the right side. You feel as you do that quite naturally the, the bent knee just nudges forwards towards the center of the room. You allow that. As the right thigh presses down it pulls back into the pelvis a little. You allow that. But check though that the right big toe base and inner heel is extending forwards. As we come forwards we're making sure that the chest evenly comes forwards. Often it's the, the left side of the chest that needs that little bit of extra attention otherwise it tends to get pulled back. Okay, then we'll release and we'll change sides. Bring the blanket across towards the right side of the mat. 
so that you can now sit up onto the blanket, both sitting bones, but leaving enough room there for the right leg to come back into Virasana. Just moving the calf muscle back, a little bit out to the side, sitting upright. Place the belt under the ball of the foot. Before we get too active again, just let the pose settle and let that right thigh bone relax. Notice when it relaxes, you can feel the skin on the head of the shin bone there, just a slight gripping of the mat and pushing it away from you. So you don't look for that, it just happens naturally, don't overdo that movement. But equally, we just want to make sure that the opposite's not happening. We don't want the knee to be pulling the, the yoga mat away from the left foot. And then once we've established that, activate the left leg, firm the kneecap, activate the left foot, the big toe base, project forwards. And pressing the left thigh down shouldn't then interfere with the right thigh. Right thigh releases down, left thigh presses down. Pulling with the belt, move the back of the right hip in, where the spine and the sacrum join move in. Notice how it makes you taller. Your eyes will reflect that back to you. Your eye level is higher as you look across the room opposite. Move your shoulder blades in, lift your chest up, either staying at that point or place the belt into the left hand and bring the, sorry, into the right hand, bring the, the left hand down onto the support. Back of the right hip in, pubic bone it turns around a little towards the left side. You feel the, the right knee just gently dragging the yoga mat towards the center of the room. The left thigh, as it presses down, it pulled back in towards the pelvis, but the left big toe base extend forwards, the left inner heel extend forwards. As you come forwards, lead with the chest, be more specific, lead with the right side of the chest. Okay, and then release. Just before we come completely out of the pose, so often people with tighter hamstrings are a little bit more protected from the tendency to hyperextend the knee. Just something to be mindful of though if we're sitting on this amount of height. We don't want the, the back of the knee often just pushing uncomfortably down into space. So what we can do, and we'll do it for the, for the next pose, is just put something under the knee that we can press down onto. Let's keep the, this amount of height to sit on. We'll just bring those blankets a little more central again so that we can now sit in the center of the mat, both sitting bones onto the blankets. You'll see what I mean here with the knees being off the floor. Good if there actually is something that we can press the knees onto, be it the floor when we're working with more flexibility or what we'll do now is we'll get a blanket. So as we start with it in that shoulder stand fold and we'll do narrow three fold. So we just had a broad three fold, now narrow three fold blanket and then we'll, like so, we'll then place it under the, it's not quite the, the back of the knee, it's more or less there, but that region where the calf muscle overlaps into the back of the knee. And it just gives you something to press firmly down onto. Seen from the side, your legs will appear straight, but we're just giving a little bit of support there for the back of the knee. Something else that can be helpful in this pose, Dandasana and Paschimottanasana, if you have got tight hamstrings, is to have the feet a little apart. It's an option, but classically the feet are together, and today we'll do that. But if you need to have the feet a little bit apart, just know that that's an option up your sleeve, just to take a little bit of the tightness off the hamstrings. Let's get that belt into position straight away. And we're sitting on the, the, the two three-fold blankets and that's probably a generous amount of height to sit on and ideal for people that are working with tighter hamstrings in this pose. It should enable you to move that area where the spine and the pelvis meet into the body. It generates some lift up through the lower back up into the chest and the spine. And if you're unable to find that 
containing movement there at the back of the pelvis and it just means that you need to sit on some additional height. The ability to, to move in there, it, it comes from the belt obviously, pulling with the belt helps, but the main action there is from the legs themselves. We've got the blanket there that we can press the backs of the knees down into. As we do that, we can extend out to the heels, the inner heels extend forwards, the big toe bases extend forwards. We pull with the belt, but press into the belt with the feet. And because I've got my feet together, I can actually see and feel that my ankle joints come closer together. For most people, it will be possible at this point to actually touch the inner ankle joints one against the other. We're pressing the backs of the knees onto the blanket, but also the root of the thigh, up nearer to the joint where the thigh bone joins in with the pelvis. Press down there as well and feel how that really helps to bring the back of the pelvis in. From the pubic bone to the navel, we're lifting up. And then we can start to think about coming forwards and we can just incrementally walk the hands that little bit further up the belt in the direction of the feet. Notice then the difficulty in maintaining the length at the front of the spine. It tends to shorten. So pull with the belt, press down with the knees onto the blanket, from the pubic bone to the navel lengthen. Pull with the belt, move the upper back in. Pull with the belt, press with the knees and lift the chest up. So we're coming forwards but leading with the chest. Face just sits back more passively. It's the chest that actively lifts and moves forwards. All right, and then release and come up. Let's, we'll go now to Upo Visto Konasana. And we'll take, remove that blanket there from behind the knees. We'll bring the legs apart. And then see if you are able to reach down to the floor there, either side of your pelvis, and get a nice firm push with the hands into the floor. You won't need to use the blocks. We've got a fair amount of height there to sit on. Some people's blankets are thicker than others. It might be necessary to have the blocks in there either side of the blanket so that you can press down firmly with your hands to generate some upward lift. Now, for many people, you won't have two yoga belts. If you were lucky enough to have two yoga belts, you can place the belts around both feet. And you can be working this way with the belts in either hand. But I'm aware that for most people with home practice, you've just got the, the one yoga belt. So for that reason, we'll be focusing more with the hands down today beside the hips. So the backs of the knees pressed down. Imagine you still had that blanket there that you could press into. Whilst doing that, the inner heels extend and the big toe bases extend. The whole length of each thigh bone pressed down, not just where the knee is, but closer up to where the hips are as well. We have these thigh creases here. Make sure that the thigh crease is pressed down. The outer thigh crease needs to press down as the inner groin turns towards the floor. Where the spine and the pelvis meet, move in. As we did in the previous pose, lifting from the pubic bone to the navel. Keeping the upper back contained, moving in and lifting the sternum bone upwards. Again, it might be that you're getting sufficient stretching there with the adductor hamstring area. And if that's the case, you can just remain as you are. The option though of then bringing the blocks forwards, maybe just turning the blocks on their side edge as well, just gives you that little bit of extra height to press down onto so that we can come forwards without stooping. We'll get to the chest and the spine, but important that we set our legs up, backs of the knees press down, the inner heels extend forwards, the big toe bases extend forwards. Check both feet, make sure that the toes are pointing directly upwards. Check both knees, make sure that the knees are facing directly upwards. Knees press down, thighs press down, and now the hands press down we move the back of the pelvis in. From the pubic bone to the navel, lift up. Pressing the backs of the knees, pressing the hands into the blocks, contain the upper back. Moving the upper back in, lift your sternum bone up. Keep the shoulders though relaxed, releasing down and away from the ears. 
All right, and then release. And you'll probably be feeling it right now, that, that tendency for the muscles in the lower back to be quite loaded, almost fatigued. There's a lot of work for them to do to support that part of the spine. It's good for them to, to strengthen, but also good if we can release them now that we've finished with our forward bending. And so we'll bring our chair into position. And similar to the very first pose that we looked at, Virasana forwards, this is a really great pose for people who are working with tighter hamstrings because it actually allows you to get into that part of the lower back and release it in a way that people who are able to get more deeply into forward bends get that nice back release. It's a really healthy movement for the lower back. Tighter hamstrings, it's hard to get into it. This pose allows you to get into it. Because we're keeping our knees bent, the hamstrings, you can feel them with your hands. There's no tightness there. Sit far back in the chair, have your feet apart, have your knees wide enough apart so that your shoulders will fit in between them. And then just reach forwards with your hands and touch the floor there between the feet, a little forwards of the feet. Don't let the feet be passive here. Lift your toes up, press your heels down and draw the thigh bones back into the hip sockets so that you're using your feet to press your sitting bones more firmly down into the seat of the chair. From there we can let the elbows bend, the arms relax. And at this point we start to get that nice traction release through the lower back. A really healthy movement to be working with if you are someone that does have tighter hamstrings. The option of either staying at that point or with both hands reaching through the, in between the, the front legs of the chair. You can hold the back legs or crossbar if it's there. And then once you're gripping that crossbar or the back legs, lift the head and look across the room. Keep pressing your heels down Keep pressing your sitting bones back into the seat of the chair. Okay, and then let's release and come up and we'll set up now for Shavasana. And we'll keep the chair for Shavasana. We'll use it as a support for the calves to rest onto. So have the chair at the end of the mat, the front of the chair faces the mat. We'll have a Half fold blanket for the head to rest onto. Make sure that you've cleared all of your equipment out of the way. If you need any extra blankets to stay warm, make sure that you take them. In particular, make sure that you're allowing enough room for your arms to come comfortably out by the sides. Lie yourself back got the calves resting up onto the seat of the chair. Your arms maybe 30 degrees, roughly 30 degrees away from the spine so that no part of the arm is bunched in, pushed in against the armpit region. And with Shavasana often when we first come to the pose, our awareness is more familiar, hovering around more regularly around the face, around the throat, around the chest, maybe the, the abdominal area. And we're less inclined to notice sensation that's occurring further out in the extremities of the body. So knowing that, let's consciously direct our attention. We'll start with the arms all the way to the ends of the arms where the fingertips are and just those knuckles there that are, are resting to the floor. Check the symmetry first of all, see if it's the same knuckles that are resting on the right hand as to what are resting on the left hand. Don't adjust, just observe. It's fine if there's a little bit of asymmetry there. The, and then just that contact, make sure that it's light contact. Passive contact, so not neither pushing down into the floor, it might be suddenly present, or the opposite, where we just even just subconsciously even just lifting a little bit the weight of the hand perpetually up. So just let the, the hands, like dead weights, rest down into the floor. Feel the 
it's almost a, a reverberation in the palms of the hands, very subtle but noticeable after we've been practicing yoga. Ideally that reverberation, a bit of a, a background buzz in the palms of the hands, it starts to quieten and subside as we stay in the Shavasana, the hands eventually start to feel more rested and neutral. But helpful for that, letting the elbow region rest down into the floor, letting the shoulders relax. And then it's checking with the, the legs, we've got that contact there of the calf muscles resting down into the seat of the chair. Feel if one leg is heavier or making more of a full contact than the other, again, don't adjust, just notice. The soles of the feet, similar to the hands, potentially just that little bit of background reverberation, a little bit of buzz. And as we stay in Shavasana, that is progressively, gradually quietening becoming more neutral and the more we just allow the body to gravitate down into the floor the more that nice relaxed even quality comes to the whole body let's check the the breath the rhythm of the breath see if Either the inhalation or the exhalation feels a bit stuck or a bit blocked. And then if there is an area that you can more completely release and relax, it might be the diaphragm, it might be the abdomen, it might be the chest. Notice the consequential change that comes to the rhythm of the breath and the quality of the breath. Nice, smooth, even inhalation and exhalation your eyes completely still, the eyeballs sinking back into the eye sockets, the upper eyelid still resting down onto the eyes. Last few moments there quiet. Okay, and then let's take a couple of slightly deeper in breaths and then knees can come into the chest and then eyes open and roll to the side. Come up as you're ready. Thank you for practicing with yoga selection. <laughs>